Good day. Uh, this is Dr. Ahmed Mithar Shafi, lecturer of otorhinolaryngology, faculty of Medicine, Helwan University. Our topic today will be uh, sore throat and pharyngitis. And the second section of this presentation will be uh, for uh, tonsil and adenoid disease. The definition of sore throat: it's a discomfort or pain. Uh, and even sc scratchiness in the throat, known medically as pharyngitis. It's a symptoms of many medical disorders. The causes mostly is viruses, the flu in rhinovirus and influenza. It's about 90% of the, of the infectious causes. Also the COVID-19 uh, have a presenting symptom with sore throat. Bacterial with strept and diphtheria, fungal and systemic diseases, which we will discuss later, like leukemia, granulocytosis, and infectious mononucleosis, ulcers of the oral cavity with different causes, causes like irritants and um, um, stress, uh, 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 cancers, uh, could be uh, malignant ulcers, and with human immunodeficiency virus uh, syndrome the AIDS, and the gastroesophageal reflux disease. Also, uh, mouth breathing due to nasal obstruction causes dryness and soreness of the throat. So mouth breathers have commonly uh, presenting with dry and sore throat. Also, sinus disease drains posterior nasal discharge, which, which continuously drains over the throat and causes a dry and sore throat. Start with pharyngitis. First, acute pharyngitis is a very common uh, and uh, it has a various etiological factors, viral, bacterial, fungal, others. The viral is the most common and the acute streptococcal pharyngitis due to the group A beta hemolytic streptococci. It's with, with the most importance due to its link with the rheumatic fever and glomerulonephritis post streptococcal infection. Also, it may be secondary to sinonasal disease like acute sinusitis with draining of the pus, irritating the, the throat, and also extension of the infection. And with a, uh, a cosmetic injury, uh, which is something irritant like an acid and uh, something irritant to the throat, and also the chronic allergy with the dryness and uh, the, the conti continuous uh, discharge on the throat causes such, uh, uh, maybe a cause for such, uh, uh, such a disease. Pathogens, viruses are the most common with the rhino and influenza and far influenza. Also the measles and the chickenpox, coxsackie, herpes simplex, infection mononucleases, cytomegalovirus, uh, also Epstein-Barr virus, uh, also, the uh, bacterial we should be uh, considering uh, streptococci, okay, the group AB, the hemolytic uh, streptococci, diphtheria, gonococci, and the fungal, uh, with also uh, other like causes like uh, parasitic toxoplasmosis. Uh, the bacteria is less common than the viral, which is obvious. Mostly, the herpes simplex and in the, in the viral infection. Uh, uh, combined with a, with a common cold, uh, it has vesicles, oral and circumoral vesicles. When they rupture, they tend to be very painful. Uh, there are multiple vesicles, also the herpes zoster, which is more painful. Also the chicken pox and the measles have in the prodromal uh, phase. It has uh, the virus, so, so mostly with a diffuse congestion all through the pharynx and the oropharynx. Uh, sometimes we can see vesicles and uh, vesicles of uh, her herpes. Uh, it's more commonly on uh, the circumoral, less commonly in the throat. This is the picture of these vesicles. Clinical features. Uh, different rates of severity. Uh, in pharyngitis presentation, mild infections, they have discomfort in the throat, 
sometimes they have low grade fever, malaise, and uh, bony aches. Uh, in these cases, it's con the, the pharynx is congested, but there is no lymphadenopathy. <coughs> Moderate to severe infections present with very painful throats and dysphagia, headache, malaise. Severe cases show erythema and oxalate and enlargement of the tonsils and lymphoid follicles in the posterior pharyngeal wall. It shows a granular posterior pharyngeal wall. And also severe cases has severe edema of the soft palate and uvula. Uh, and also the cervical lymphadenopathy uh, is the character of the moderate and severe cases of viral pharyngitis. It's not possible on clinical examination to differentiate between viral and bacterial pharyngitis. But viral infections are generally mild and are accompanied with runny nose, hoarseness and change of voice, while bacterial ones are mostly severe and it takes, uh, it takes a longer time. Uh, uh, the symptoms may carry with the patient for a longer time. <coughs> Gonococcal pharyngitis, it's mild and might be even symptomatic. Go, uh, gonorrhea is a, uh, an STD, a sexually transmitted disease, and syphilis, they are different, have a different presentation. Uh, it's less common to be, uh, to be diagnosed, uh, maybe sometimes diagnosed in cases with uh, uh, resistant pharyngitis. For diagnosis, we have uh, uh, different tools that clinical examination with the uh, proper history taking and considering to take uh, uh, also a uh, culture from the throat by throat swab and the smear uh, for the viruses. This is really indicated mostly in resistant cases. Uh, it can, uh, this uh, swabs can detect 90% uh, of uh, group A beta with extractive guy. Sometimes you might need a special media like diphtheria. Uh, swabs from suspected case of gonococcal pharyngitis should be cultured immediately and failure to get any bacterial growth or just a viral etiology. At the general scheme for the treatment, the use, the use of supportive care has proper rest, proper hydration, humidity, and the surrounding environment of the patient, lozenges, anesthetic sprays, containing xylocaine and iodine gargles might uh, help controlling the uh, the infection uh, antipyretics for fever and also uh, as an analgesics uh, decongestants might ease the symptoms especially in rhinorrhea but might cause some throat dryness antibiotics only for bacterial infection those uh, diagrams for cases of acute pharyngitis might be viral or bacterial cause. Chronic pharyngitis is a chronic inflammatory condition for the pharynx and the pharyngeal mucosa. Hypertrophy of the mucosa and the gland uh, uh, in the mucosa and the lymphoid follicles, even the muscular coat of the pharynx. There are two types, chronic catarrhal pharyngitis and chronic hypertrophic granular the etiology persistent infection in the neighborhood. In chronic rhinitis and sinusitis, with the posterior nasal discharge continuously discharging over the oropharynx, uh, this causes hypertrophy of the lateral pharyngeal bands, similarly, chronic tonsillitis and any uh, recurrent dental infection, also responsible for chronic pharyngitis. Also, the mouth breathers. Uh, this exposes the pharynx to dryness and lack of filtration and humidification and uh, adjusting the temperature of the air, uh, this making it susceptible for infections. Mouth breathing is due to obstruction in the nose, with, whether it's polypies, uh, allergy, vasomotor rhinitis, hypertrophied turbinates, and deviated septums, even tumors. Uh, uh, obstruction of the nasal pharynx where there is adenoids or tumors and uh, sometimes uh, dental problems might be a cause of uh, chronic mouth opening. 
and can be habitual after exclusion of all other causes. Chronic irritants, smoking, chewing tobacco, as famous in uh, some countries and some cultures, uh, drinking highly spicy food in some countries and some cultures, also all of these lead to chronic pharyngitis. Environmental pollution, dusty, smoky irritants, industrial uh, areas, also might be cause of chronic pharyngitis. Uh, sometimes people have habitual faulty voice production, excessive use of uh, uh, a voice. Uh, certain professionals, they have some, some sort of professional neurosis with constant the symptoms. Discomfort, pain in the throat as usual, especially in the morning. Also dryness is uh, another complaint, foreign body sensation in the throat. The patient say in his own words, I have a feeling there is something stuck in my throat. Constant de desire to swallow and clear his throat, tiredness of his voice. Patient cannot speak for a long time and has to make uh, undue effort to speak as his throat, uh, his, his throat starts aching and itching. The voice may also lose its quality and may even have some uh, crack sound. Repeated cough due to irritable throat. Also, opening of the mouth may induce also the sign uh, for chronic catarrhal pharyngitis, congestion of the posterior pharyngeal wall, vessels engorgement, and the pillars for the uh, for the tonsils might be thickened. There is increased mucus secretion, which may be the chronic hypertrophic granular type with congestion, thickening of the dilated vessels, and reddish nodules or of, due to hypertrophy of the sub epithelial lymphoid tissue. Uh, this could be seen uh, um, due to different causes, but this is diagnostic for granular uh, hypertrophic pharyngitis. The lateral pharyngeal bands might be hypertrophied too, and the uvula might be edematous and elongated in some cases. History taking and examination, cultures and biopsies. Uh, sometimes uh, we start with empiric therapies, and the treatment mostly uh, search for an etiological factor, give the patient advice and to try to eradicate this cause. Uh, treating the cause, the first, uh, the first, uh, what we do first, voice rest and some speech therapy advice from a speech uh, therapist, uh, a professional, uh, can give some advice for the patient from uh, to avoid this faulty voice production, um, avoid clearing his, his throat and also proper hydration uh, to avoid such habit, warm saline gargles in the morning to avoid dryness and uh, some uh, uh, enough hydration, micro bacterial infections, the presence of normal flora and oral cavity uh, with gram positive aerobic organisms and anaerobic organisms. Streptococcal is the most common, especially in kids, with the famous group AB beta hemolytic streptococci. Other streptococci may be involved, but it has been linked with severe pharyngitis and sometimes uh, complications. The group A beta hemolytic streptococci has incubation periods uh, of either uh, from 12 hours, <coughs> uh, presenting symptoms with a usual uh, fever and throat, throat dysphagia, exudate uh, over the tonsils, enlarged neck nodes, rhinorrhea, cough are not common. Uh, uncommon in infants due to the presence of maternal IgG and also the lack of pharyngeal receptors for these bacterial uh, agents. Uh, there is two uh, rapid tests uh, as the entire unit is a rapid antigen test 
the optical immunoassay rapid entry test. Uh, sometimes uh, we do culture uh, if, if uh, there is a rapid entry is negative uh, to uh, to identify for uh, for thinking about the risk of rheumatic fever. Also, the antitryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltryptyltrypt
The virus can remain latent and might be reactivated under a variety of stimuli. Uh, sometimes it, uh, it becomes uh, dormant in sensory and uh, neural ganglia. When there is reactivation, it might recur. Treatment is symptomatic. The use of antiviral as a cyclovir. Uh, mostly, uh, we recommend it for the immunocompromised, for the fear of uh, central nervous uh, system spread and uh, spread of the infection. And it might be this <coughs> measles, uh, there is conjunctivitis, and this complex spots with uh, this lesion over the buccal mucosa, uh, lymph nodes, lymphoid hyperplasia. Uh, treatment is mostly symptomatic. It's a uh, self-limiting uh, problem. Uh, the mortality from the bacterial soup the first time bar virus infecting the B cell. Uh, the main concern here is it have uh, uh, a link with developing uh, some malignancies as nasopharyngeal undifferentiated carcinoma and the Burkitt lymphoma. Uh, it has a direct association with it. The spinomegaly, hepatomegaly, and also um, diagnosing by uh, um, the uh, complete um, blood count with at, at, uh, showing atypical lymphocytes, uh, the hepatomegaly with the hepatitis, and also the monospot test, uh, which is, might be negative in children less than 10 years, and also um, identifying uh, antibodies. Uh, of the viral capsules uh, might be help might be helping for diagnosis um, also uh, uh, depending on the uh, the IgG which for uh, uh, older infections and the IgM of a, a, a short term uh, recent infection. Those antigens they present for some time, and they help in diagnosis, and they might be positive for life. At the site of the virus, it's a member of the herpes viridae family. It has congenital and, and acquired infections. Uh, it might be uh, asymptomatic, but the main concern is uh, it causes the infectious mononucleosis. It's a syndrome mostly caused by cytomegal virus, also toxoplasma, rubella, uh, uh, hepatitis A, and HIV and adenovirus. The clinical picture, it has a febrile type, unknown fever, not responding to treatment, and generalized lymphadenopathy uh, with the adenose type, and there is uh, multiple throat ulcers, and also sometimes present with uh, uh, jaundice um, uh, due to uh, the infection monitoring the infectious uh, Epstein Barr virus might be the cause. CBC shows atypical monocytosis, the monospot test, pulmonary test, and a rash that appears with the use of ampicillin. Also, spleen uh, enlargement, hepatitis, and rash. Uh, Infection mononucleosis, this shows uh, um, uh, this uh, membrane uh, covering the, the tonsils. Uh, it can be diagnosed by positive full bundle test. Uh, it's better to avoid using antibiotics as it has a, uh, an, a severe urticaria effect and also the appearance of rash. Uh, also, um, the HIV type 1 has signs mimicking the epstein bar and uh, might present with fever, malaise, myalgia, photophobia, lymphadenopathy, and micropapular rash. So it might be considered other factors might be helping in the diagnosis. Uh, other systemic diseases, leukemia and agronocytosis were leukocyte less than 2000, mostly post irradiation and post chemotherapy. Uh, the sore throat and the dysphagia and ulcers in the oral cavity, the pharynx, the large lymph nodes, and sometimes secondary bacterial infection, which could be fatal. The treatment is mostly by 
isolation uh, antibiotic, uh, receiving fresh blood transfusion, and treating the, the cause, which is by uh, removing the, uh, stopping the chemotherapy and uh, uh, stopping the, uh, the diphtheria, uh, the coronabacterium diphtheria. It's a gram positive aerobic, it's a toxogenic bacteria. Uh, uh, involves the uh, oropharynx, nasal, laryngeal, and also genital, low grade fever with severe toxemia, with severe lymph node enlargement. The developing of the membrane is a characteristic unilateral grayish white, exceeds the limits of the cell tonsils, and also it's firmly adherent with bleeds on removal. The vaccine, the DPT, uh, decreased the incidence of bacteri uh, this, uh, bacterial infection. Uh, complications is due to uh, different causes. Uh, the laryngeal obstruction could be due to uh, uh, the, uh, the membrane that might be detached uh, might be including the airway, also the uh, vagal neuritis as a, a post uh, diphtheric complication, post diphtheric paralysis. Uh, also, the bronchopneumonia due to the spread of the infection. Uh, also, uh, it might help to uh, lung, uh, might lead to lung collapse and respiratory failure. Uh, cardiac toxic myocarditis, vagal neuritis, which is late and leading to heart failure, liver cell failure, toxic nephritis, neurological, uh, this is the post diphtheric paralysis, um, uh, there's the palate, uh, palatal paralysis with the nasal regurgitation of fluids and food and the nasal tone and ocular muscles yeah. due to affection of the cranial nerves, uh, third, fourth, sixth cranial nerve with leading to external and internal ophthalmoplasia, leading to diplopia and blurring of vision. Pharynx and larynx with dyspnea and strider, and dysphagia, and intercostal muscles and diaphragm, which add to the uh, respiratory uh, uh, difficulties. There is differential diagnosis of membranes on the tonsils the acute focalitis tonsillitis, diphtheria, uh, which with, with its characteristic membrane, scarlet fever, Vinces angina, and um, systemic disease like leukemia, granulocytosis, infectious mononucleosis, and fungal, and um, the malignant ulcers in case of uh, man, uh, malignant uh, uh, oropharyngeal malignancies, uh, sometimes there is secondary infection over it. So, uh, this might be put into uh, defensive angina. Uh, it's an anaerobic organism due to Borrelia vincenti uh, with severe local um, uh, pain with absence of general toxemia. Whether the pain is out of proportion to what we see on examination, uh, this killing pain. Uh, has severe uh, referred uh, earache and uh, tender lymph nodes with bad breath. Uh, there is a membrane or ulcer covering the tonsils, palate, or gum. Treat it as acute tonsillitis and mostly it's a unit. The ulcers of the pharynx and oral cavity, uh, locally, trauma due to a sharp or bad tooth. Sometimes chemical agents, uh, infective, and uh, malignant tumors might present as malignant ulcers. And uh, general causes due to uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease and dyspepsia and malabsorption. This is a diagram for a malignant ulcer. Uh, that might be a representation of the uh, oropharyngeal uh, and oral cavity malignant. The Astus ulcer is the commonest. A uh, small group of painful ulcers or one big ulcer. It might resemble a malignant ulcer. 
due to malabsorption in the flux and sometimes treated by adding uh, folic acid and different uh, vitamins. There is no um, a universal treatment for it. Uh, it's self-resolving, uh, avoiding uh, only uh, secondary bacterial infection. The aptos ulcers, different diagrams. The whooping cough with the Bordetella bertussis. Also, it's due to the deep the DPT. It's less common now. Uh, it has a paroxysm of coughing by an inspiratory strider-like sound. Uh, it's called the whooping cough. Uh, whooping cough is in Arabic a sual uh, adiki with a croupy sound. Uh, it has three stages, the catarrhal stage, and the paroxysmal stage, and the convalescent stage. Um, it lasts about, uh, it starts with the catarrhal stage, uh, lasts about one to two weeks, uh, low grade fever, upper respiratory symptoms, mild symptoms, and the paroxysmal stage with the characteristic coughing, and the exudates, fever less, uh, takes a longer time. And the convalescent states, uh, it's a self uh, yeah, prolongation of this self limited, uh, limited uh, disease. Uh, it's, um, antibiotics will not, will not be of a uh, big help. Uh, immunization by the DPT uh, uh, make this condition gonorrhea due to Neisseria gonorrhea. <coughs> mostly asymptomatic it has a specific culture with a chocolate agar media treatment is penicillin tetracycline cephalosporin and quinolones also rare condition it's a chronic rhinomatis as the rhinoscleroma with uh, different stages where there is high uh, catarrhal and hypertrophic and fibrotic stages uh, uh, less common in the pharyngeal region more, more in the uh, uh, in the uh, nasal, as, as it's called rhinosteroma, and also sometimes maybe a cause of laryngeal stenosis, uh, as in sometimes laryngeal. Uh, for the syphilis, uh, the organism is a treponema pallidum. Uh, it has uh, different stages, starting with the congenital, primary, secondary, and tertiary. The primary, it has a painless solitary funker at the site of inoculation, and it's a, a sectional transmitted disease. Um, the inflammatory infiltrates has characteristic histologic hallmark, which is the end of arthritis of the trans. The secondary stage with the pharyngeal tonsillitis and the skin lesions and lymphadenopathy, and this. Um, uh, mucosal patches with the on on the on the pharynx uh, with a silver gray uh, appearance with a uh, red margins. It's painless and superficial erosions. One third will go into spontaneous remission. One third will proceed with a latent disease, and another third will progress to tertiary gamma syphilis, uh, which mostly involves the CNS and the aorta. Uh, Sanguinolytic uh, lesion leads to central coagulative necro necrosis. Uh, it has a characteristic uh, uh, finding on uh, on uh, micro uh, uh, microbiology and pathology. Uh, testing will be either non-specific or specific. The VDRL test, Venereal Disease Research Lab. Um, and rapid plasma antigen test used as a screening test. Confirmatory will use the specific uh, treponemal antibody test. Treatment will be penicillin uh, and for allergic patients, tetracycline. And, um, fungal infections, mostly immunocompromised for those with chronic disease like diabetes.
candidal infections, which is the candida albicans, is the most common, which is norm normally present in the, uh, the oral cavity. But uh, infections uh, need uh, an immunocompromised condition for the, the infection to uh, take place. HIV post irradiation patients and uh, diabetics uncontrolled. Um, it needs a special stain uh, with the um, periodic acid shift stain and smears for culture on uh, subword agar. Topical nystatin and oral ketoconazoles and fluconazoles um, and also amphotericin B may or might be used. But this is in uh, uh, severe conditions, uh, we will need uh, a systemic medication. Uh, mostly local uh, treatment will be effective with correction of the general condition. Deep, uh, deep mycosis like uh, Cryptococcus rhinosporosis, histoplasma, and the alpicans, uh, you must search for the cause. Uh, this mostly occur in an immunocompromised patient. The prolonged use of antibiotics might be uh, a common cause for it. Also malnutrition, hypovitaminosis, diabetes mellitus, uncontrolled, and uh, post radiation and HIV might be another causes. Um, this is a picture for a uh, case of disseminated candidiasis due to uh, presence of HIV. Um, this oral candida can be treated with uh, mostly topical and systemic antifungal agents. Uh, topical as nystatins and also ketoconazole could be topical and systemic. And there is dysphagia. Um, might also uh, consider a presence of esophageal candidiasis. Actinomycosis. Uh, Actinomycosis or Australia, they present in the normal flora. Uh, they might be on the tonsils and um, also present uh, with uh, dental infections. Uh, it's a gram positive aerobic, uh, anaerobic bacillus. Uh, sometimes it may cause a deep neck infection with a small abscesses that might be uh, rupturing, causing small fistulas uh, that has uh, formed into tracts for this fistula and uh, it might have sulfur granules treated with penicillin but for a long time and it has uh, a tendency to recur uh, if inadequate treatment uh, also granulomous diseases causing pharyngitis uh, TB, Libracy uh, will not be into much detail considering this uh, uh, disease but the pharyngeal tonsillitis and uh, involving uh, the pulmonary involvement uh, might be uh, important landmark for uh, TB uh, also uh, in Libracy the nasal cavity, um, well, either it's either, either it's lepromatous or tuberculoid. Um, sometimes um, uh, there is a reaction, um, as it's mimicking uh, uh, mimicking the tuberculous reaction, and especially in tuberculoid uh, liberacy, uh, and. Sometimes there is uh, nerve damage with it. Um, the treatment will be uh, from scene and that one, and uh, it, need, it needs to be discussed in detail in other sections. Radiation pharyngitis, it's oral pharyngeal mucosa, uh, atrophic changes due to inhibition of cell division and high cellular turnover treatment it's to um, you can use topical steroids um, in proper hydration for uh, due to xerostomia that happens due to uh, atrophy of the um, uh, uh, the, the glands the, uh, secreting the saliva 
and a dryness in the food, uh, sucral feet, diphenhydramine, and local antibacterial might be happy, uh, might be helping. The Steven Johnson syndrome, which an adult activated erythema multiform. Also, uh, it's usually following an upper respiratory tract infection and usage of certain medications like uh, anticonvulsants and barbiturates. There is a uh, lesion which is a vesicular and bulbous lesion, uh, painful involving the mucosal uh, uh, and the skin. It might ulcerate and bleed. And also there is fever and pulmonary involvement, uh, mostly self-limiting. Uh, the skin and the mucosal lesion uh, need a few weeks to resolve with a very high recurrence rate treatment as um, uh, symptomatic with receiving uh, enough fluids with, and electrolyte correction and treating the secondary infection that might be uh, topping this condition um, and also stopping the offending agent uh, the medication and treating the upper respiratory infection. Idiopathic pharyngitis. It's a pharyngeal pain without an obvious source. Uh, post nasal discharge uh, might be caused. Uh, reflux. Um, sometimes uh, subclinical infections. Uh, dietary uh, uh, like excessive uh, uh, intake of acidic food. Uh, hot, spicy and habits like smoking, uh, some medications like uh, mouth gargle, or throat sprays, um, sometimes uh, uh, receiving um, irritants uh, and uh, uh, some drugs with local irritant effects. Featuring a diagnosis, We'll start by the history, asking uh, in patient on ward, uh, for looking for symptoms of common cold, change of voice, systemic uh, symptoms with liver and spleen enlargement, and examination uh, by checking the throat, uh, examining the oral cavity and the uh, uh, the oral pharynx. Checking the uh, cervical lymph node and the use of the flexible fiber optic, checking uh, from starting from the nasal cavity to the nasal pharynx to the uh, um, oropharynx and hypopharynx and larynx. Investigations um, for the bacteria we consider throat swab for culture and sensitivity, uh, also blood. Uh, uh, checking the blood samples like uh, complete blood count, specific tests like monospot for one test for uh, infectious uh, modern necrosis, and the dig test for the scarlet fever and the Charlton test, and sometimes terminal puncture for uh, the throat swab. Could be taken when diagnosed. A throat swab is suspected 
from the clinical and epidemiological finding and the patient is not already taking any antibiotics. Antibiotics cause a uh, no growth over the throat swab and might be uh, a diagnostic difficulty uh, by a patient receiving an empiric antibiotic treatment. Uh, this might be causing a failure of the uh, of, uh, of getting a proper result from this uh, throat swab. Culture is usually the only test required. However, antibiotic sensitivity should also be requested in penicillin allergic patient, uh, patients due to the emergence of erythromycin resistant strain of streptococcus. Uh, Mint, viral throat, we need gargling, symptomatic treatment for bacterial strep infection. The antibiotic of choice is penicillin B and also some alternatives, the amoxicillin uh, and erythromycin uh, uh, for allergic patients, uh, allergic to penicillin. Uh, 10 days mostly uh, the uh, duration of the treatment. Other causes like monoleases and leukemia granulase cytosis uh, as discussed earlier. earlier. The second part of our uh, presentation uh, for the uh, uh, adenoid and cellular disease will be starting with the acute tonsillitis which is an inflammation of the palatine tonsil with the same etiology for viral and bacterial infections and crypt obstruction due to inflammation leading to uh, stages of the crypt debris and uh, resistance of the antigen for this bacterial agent. Uh, the most common pathogen is group AV technology such as cocoi, cataralis, which is a virus, and hemophilus influenza. Pneumococci staph types could be acute superficial tonsillitis, which is a, uh, almost the same as the pharyngitis, mainly it's a viral. Membranous with exudation and a membrane over the portal surface, follicular with crypts infected and filled with pus, and with yellow spots and exudates over the tonsil, and the acute parenchymatous tonsillitis with the tonsil substance is affected. Sometimes it might be a little bit fibrotic. picture mostly in school aged children torso throat dysphagia uh, leading uh, might be up to uh, high grade fever anorexia trismus and some symptoms uh, constitutional symptoms as headache malaise bony aches ear aches due to referred ear ache referred autologia uh, and might be with uh, concomitant ketotitis media uh, which might occur as a complication. Also, halitosis, uh, which is a bad uh, mouth smell, uh, and abdominal pain sometimes is resistant to pedonitis, which is rare. Signs according to the pathological types, uh, which will, might be variable, enlarged tender lymph nodes, we might consider other differential diagnoses for diphtheria. Scarlet fever and other infection molecules causing membranes or signs, tonsils might be uniformly enlarged and red, bad odor, bad sensitoid uh, uh, breath, coated tongue, hypremia of pillars and soft palate amoeba, tonsils red swollen and yellowish spots, brilliant uh, exudates. Uh, and membrane presenting at the opening of the crypt, which is the acute follicular variant. Tonsils might be whitish, uh, they have white membrane on the medial surface of the tonsil, can be easily wiped out without bleeding, for swapping and for cultural sensitivity. This is the acute membranous uh, type. Tonsils might be enlarged and congested and uh, they almost meet the midline 
Uh, there is edema, which is, uh, there is uh, uh, edema of the uvula and the soft palate. This is the parenchymatous tonsillitis. And enlargement of the gastrointestinal lymph nodes. Um, recurrent acute tonsillitis. Uh, over the last year, at least uh, seven episodes, or at least five episodes for two consecutive years, or at least three episodes in a year for three years. Diagnosis, clinical throat swab and culture, and the group AV diagnostic stratocy rapid antigen test, antistratolysin outage, which is last used now, monospot test. For the carrier state, we uh, can depend on the antistratolysin outage. Uh, differential diagnosis, uh, the peri peritonsolar acid, the quincy, leukemia, and lymphoma. Um, this picture on the exudates uh, the tonsillar crepts. Also, this is the parenchymatous enlargement of the tonsils, and there is grading for this tonsillar enlargement. There is the acute tonsillitis, sometimes present with petechiae over the uh, soft palate. This is an enlarged uh, cervical lymph node. Those diagrams, this is uh, a membranous and this is a parenchymatous uh, uh, variant. Uh, considering the problem of developing rheumatic fever, rheumatic colitis, and uh, glomerular nephritis due to this. Uh, complication developing into uh, corrosion survivors, recurrent acute attack as discussed before. Due to incomplete resolution of this infection, uh, this might be uh, resisting the lymphoid follicles of the tonsil, forming microabscesses. This chronic condition might need uh, intervention. Peritonsillar abscess with the quincy, parapharyngeal abscess, which is extensive uh, uh, suppuration into the parapharyngeal space and the retropharyngeal space, will be discuss discussed in uh, another lecture of the deep neck space infection. Cervical uh, abscess due to suppuration of the uh, jacodigastric uh, lymph nodes, acute otitis media, and rheumatic fever, um, as it's associated with group AB thermolytic streptococci, glomerular nephritis also, and uh, subacute bacterial endocarditis. Patient with uh, vulvar uh, heart disease might be at risk of developing endocarditis during uh, an acute infection uh, with acute tonsillitis. Streptococcus is very dense, mostly the cause for this endocarditis. And also for bright convulsions in infants and children. And this diagram is a uh, x-ray of the neck uh, lateral view showing uh, widening of the retropharyngeal space, which is mostly uh, retropharyngeal abscess. First, the solar abscess of the Quincy uh, has a characteristic of an acute uh, tonsillitis in addition to uh, severity of the toxemia and dysphagia and trismus and pain with uh, very, very bad o mouth odor and uh, muffled hot potato voice and the lymphadenopathy and differential diagnosis for other causes of sore throat and oropharyngeal sores 
Also, carotid aneurysm might be uh, uh, presenting with a, a, a large tonsil, unilateral enlargement of the tonsil, uh, pushing it to the uh, midline. So, uh, sometimes procedure as uh, using uh, a needle to uh, to take a sample from the pus in the uh, person cellular capsule might be a dangerous uh, uh, dangerous intervention. Uh, uh, complication, extension of the infection. This cringy, uh, there is a bulge of the soft palate and the tonsil to one side. Uh, pushing the uvula to the other side another diagram another diagram this shows severe soft palate edema for comparing uh, mostly we suspect it's a stripped infection for young age groups with uh, fever, high grade fever, absence of cough, excessive pharyngitis, cervical implant enlargement, um, and uh, exposure to uh, another uh, uh, another uh, patient affected uh, with group A system, uh, group A streptococci. It's less likely if there is cough and there is uh, conjunctivitis, and there is a runny nose and hoarseness, and uh, uh, ulcers management as usual bed rest and hydration get a proper uh, proper supportive treatment oral hygiene analgesia antibiotics most of the infections are due to streptococci so we use penicillin as a drug of choice clindamycin if the patient is allergic to penicillin uh, and it should be continued for 7 to 10 days tonsillectomy in case of proceeding of uh, attacks of acute tonsillitis into uh, current attacks uh, having a chronic the chronic tonsillitis with these recurrent attacks of uh, acute tonsillitis uh, and persistence of symptoms also causing obstructive sleep apnea, dysphagia bad odor in the oral cavity and general illness, loss of weight, headache, and uh, rheumatic pain. The crypt in the tonsils shows irregularity. Sometimes there is hyperemia and hypertrophy of the pillars and enlargement of the uh, jugular digastric lymph nodes. Persistence of the symptoms. Mostly it's a polymicrobial infection. It's a complication of acute tonsillitis. Pathologically, there is microabscesses in the uh, uh, lymphoid tissue in the tonsil, which is walled by fibrous tissue. Um, this uh, uh, might be uh, presented as a subclinical infection without an acute attack. Mostly affect children and young adults. Rarely occurs after 50 years. Chronic infections in the sinuses and teeth might be the previous types. Um, chronic follicular with the and the chronic parenthesis and the chronic fibroid. Uh, for the follicular type, the crypts are fully infected uh, with full with uh, cheesy material. Shows. Uh, a yellow spot on the, on the surface. The parenchymatous type, which is hyperplasia and enlargement of the tonsils, may be interfered with speech, deglutition, and respiration, causing sleep apnea. Uh, and long standing cases develop features of corporal memory, which is pulmonary hypertension due to uh, prolonged sleep apnea condition. And the fibroid tonsils. It might be small, but in fact, uh, also history is helping uh, having a repeated sore throat and 
naked pictures, recurrent sore throat, recurrent attack of acute tonsillitis, chronic irritation in the throat with cough, bad taste in the mouth and halitosis, and uh, this mostly might be uh, due to uh, the past present in the crypts, um, speech difficulties, swallowing, choking, uh, obstructive sleep apnea symptoms, cervical infernodenopathy, and the formation of tonsillo tonsillo uh, olis. Uh, this tonsillo olis, um, it's like uh, uh, tones develop uh, in the uh, inside the tonsillar crypts later. On examination, tonsils might be showing viral degree of enlargement. Sometimes they meet in the midline in the chronic parenchymatous type. Uh, so sometimes we say it's a kissing tonsil. They are maybe uh, yellowish beads of pus on the media surface on the follicular type. Uh, they might be small, in, like in the fibroid type, with uh, hypertrophy and uh, erythema of the anterior pillar. And sometimes the you know, maybe appearance of this uh, exudative cheesy material uh, over the tonsil, and um, the pillars might be uh, congested in comparison with the rest of the pharyngeal mucosa. Uh, so this is an important sign of chronic tonsillar disease, and the lymph nodes enlargement is a reliable sign. And during the attacks, the nodes enlarge further and become even more. The management, conservative treatment, general condition, diet, and treat coexisting infection of the teeth and the nose and the sinuses, uh, and long term antibiotics against beta lactamines producing organisms and encapsulated organisms. And complications, the sensor it's a calculus of the tonsils, more often seen in adults. The debris is become retained in, 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 the, in the process of chronic tonsillitis. It becomes blocked inside the crypt. Uh, the position of the inorganic salts of the calcium and magnesium leading to formation of stone. They gradually enlarge and ulcerate through the tonsil causing local discomfort and foreign body sensation. They can be visible and could be also be valuable. It has a gritty, hard feeling on probing. Treatment by removal of the stone later on, we do. Other complications, the intratonsillar abscess with the accumulation of the debris inside the tonsil by blocking the crypt. There is marked local, local pain in this area and tonsil appears swollen and red. Uh, treatment with antibiotics and during of the abscess would be required. Later, tonsillectomy should be performed. Tonsillar cyst is easily drained. Also, uh, a blockage of the tonsillar crypt is the, uh, is the cause. And it shows a yellowy, uh, yellow, yellowish swelling, uh, cystic in shape over the tonsil. It's symptomless mainly. Indications for tonsillectomy. There is an absolute and relative indication. The absolute is tonsillar hyperplasia causing uh, sleep apnea. This is a sleep apnea. It's a heart condition leading to chronic mouth breathing and dangerous as the patient goes through bouts of hypoxia and uh, sometimes uh, breathing might uh, stop for a few seconds up to developing into uh, pulmonary hypertension or cold pulmonary. Uh, failure to thrive also due to improper uh, uh, improper sleeping due to recurrent attacks um, affecting the interfacial growth as Mouth breathing due to enlargement might develop. Abnormal 
uh, abnormal uh, growth and development of the uh, facial skeleton um, causing deformities in the palate and uh, the shape of uh, shape of the uh, dental uh, structure also uh, uh, suspected malignancy might be um, a cause of uh, indication of uh, tonsillectomy, uh, uh, especially if there is a unilateral large tonsil. The relative indications, uh, the recurrent acute, acute tonsillitis, is, uh, attacks must be documented. Uh, in one year, seven attacks, five, ye five, five times in two years, three three infections annually in three years. Uh, also the peritonsillar abscess and uh, it is causing swallowing difficulties and dysphagia and for halitosis for a long time. And also carriers of streptococcal uh, infection um, not responding to um, the use of various tools and applying the new technology available now. At first, uh, we, uh, the cold sharp dissection is the conventional way. Uh, it was the only uh, technique used earlier. Um, cold dissection followed by suture ligation of the uh, blood vessel. The use of electro cautery is the most commonly performed. Also, the use of laser ablation and harmonic scalpels uh, using ultrasound technology to cut and coagulate, and the copulation. Uh, they all have uh, the advantage of the uh, decreased pain uh, and uh, less bleeding rates and uh, fast, faster and earlier recovery uh, than uh, electrocautery um, and uh, conventional. Uh, uh, conventional way. Post operative management fluids until the patient um, start uh, oral intake, um, liquid diet at start to soft diet, patients who are unable uh, to tolerate a liquid oral diet and having vomiting and there is bleeding must not be the short and should be stayed at hospital, which is rare. Uh, starting uh, early uh, oral intake helps decreasing this problem, and there is some dietary restrictions to avoid hard and hot and spicy and acidic foods, to avoid uh, post-operative uh, pain and post-operative uh, complications. Analgesia and antibiotics is uh, used uh, there is no actually evidence for use of antibiotics. Using proper analgesia and early start of oral intake is the uh, main uh, 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 the main thing that we should do. Complications, either intraoperative or postoperative. Intraoperative bleeding must be uh, the surgeon must be uh, capable of um, controlling. Uh, the bleeders by understanding understanding the anatomy uh, and uh, the very blood supply to the tonsils um, and also must avoid injury to the surrounding structures at these and you must uh, preserve the tonsillar pillars as it helps to protect the tonsillar bed uh, protecting the pharyngeal constriction which, which might be its exposure uh, might be very, very, uh, uh, very, very uh, delaying the uh, healing and recovery for this. Uh, preserving the soft palate, um, as uh, injury it will be due to bad surgical technique. Post-operative bleeding, uh, infection of the tonsillar uh, bed, leading to parapharyngeal abscess and also lights media. Um, dehydration will be due to pain as patients will be avoiding to have oral intake. Also, if there is bleeding, there will be aspiration and lung collapse, and there is pulmonary edema as there is 
uh, this patient will be suffering from long-standing airway obstruction, uh, obstructive sleep apnea. So this sudden relief might be causing pulmonary edema, which is a rare condition, for, must be uh, considered. Scarring of the soft palate and pillars. Consular remnant will be uh, present if inadequate surgery is done, still getting repeated infection. Hypertrophy of the lingual tonsils as a replacement of the uh, uh, due to uh, uh, hyperplasia to the lymphoid tissue. And also the uh, cervical spine subluxation at the Grice syndrome. Uh, there is hyperextension. Uh, hyperextension might be uh, a problem uh, done in children with Down syndrome, and it's better be avoided. And they're very liable for subluxation to uh, cervical uh, first and second cervical spine. And also a rare complication is the Eagle syndrome, which is recurrent pain at the oropharynx. Could be due to uh, elongated style process. Um, uh, affecting the uh, irritating uh, through the pain through the glossopharyngeal nerves or calcified uh, style hair ligament. A picture uh, showing the developing of a membrane at the tonsillar fossa post operative. This membrane will cover the tonsillar bed. Um, actually, uh, this appeared by the third to fourth day post operative. And uh, as hearing occur, as uh, healing occur, it become uh, disconnected, uh, showing a, he, a, a normal uh, mucosa of the olfax. post syncytial bleeding is a serious condition. The types either primary and secondary. This is a recent classification. The primary bleeding <coughs> less than 24 hours. Post-operative, uh, inadequate hemostasis intraoperative as the main cause uh, is controlled by uh, exploring uh, the bed, removing the cloth, uh, pressure, vasodilator pressure uh, drops, and uh, clipping of the uh, blood vessel, identifying it, and either electrocoagulation or uh, clipping or ligation uh, of the uh, blood vessel. Uh, this uh, must be done under general anesthesia. Uh, five to ten days post-operative, uh, usually, and uh, after one uh, after one day post-operative, this is a secondary bleeding, infection and scarring and sloughing off of the membrane covering the tonsillar bed, uh, controlled by the same uh, and the same condition, but. Uh, 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 administration of systemic antibiotics will have a major role here. Sometimes bleeding stop and patient can stay at hospital for uh, some time uh, to be monitored uh, to avoid uh, recurrence of bleeding. Profuse bleeding will need to get back into the operation theater under general anesthesia controlling the bleeder by ligation or electrocoagulation uh, but it's better be avoided to reach such condition as uh, early diet intake and uh, proper diagnosis of infection and early treatment using antibiotics will uh, might be helping to avoid such uh, adenoid or the nasopharyngeal tonsil lymphoid tissue in the posterior wall of the nasopharynx uh, laterally uh, to it is the fossum of the uh, fossa of Rosenmuller and uh, the sticking tube orifice and the torus tuberis and inferior to it is the uh, superior margin of superior constrictor muscle forming the uh, structure known as the passive Uh, with no crypt, no capsule, uh, from the bulk of lymphoid tissue, uh, the ring, present at birth, with physiological 
enlargement up to age of 6 years, then atrophy almost completely by the age of 20 years, and the adenoid tissue serves as a mechanical obstruction to uh, the staking tube orifice, leading to recurrent attacks of acute lysis media as it disturbs the ventilation and have a reservoir for bacteria causing these recurrent attacks and the adenoid hypertrophy due to physiological hypertrophy recurrent attacks of cellulitis connective cellulitis clinical classification acute adenitis and recurrent acute adenitis which has more, four or more attacks over six twelve months with immune deficiency uh, and also the acute adenitis with symptoms making any uh, upper respiratory tract, but uh, with uh, attacks of virus media and uh, pre persistent uh, symptoms. Uh, antibiotic prophylaxis might be helpful. Doctors can distinguish it from recurrent sinusitis. Uh, CT to assess the sinuses and X-ray, uh, and also CT might assess the nidopharynx, or we might be sufficient to use an uh, X-ray near the pharynx lateral view as we did in the Chronic adenoid needs a discharge persistent chronic congestion to stop the differenti differentiated from sinus disease, uh, extra associated reflux, gastro and, and uh, might be a cause, sleep apnea due to hyperplasia, uh, Chronic hyperplasia and causing obstruction might be a uh, uh, cause of mouth breathing and snoring and hyponasal. Adenoid facies is characteristic uh, due to chronic nasal obstruction and mouth breathing. Uh, the upper lip is hitched up. The lips will not seal the oral cavity. Uh, prominent and crowded upper teeth. Uh, Retrognathy of the mandible. Uh, elongated, elongated face with dull expressions. Dull circles around the eyes. Hypoplastic maxilla. These cheeks might look to be a little bit hypoplastic. High arched palate on examining the palate through the oral cavity and nostrils will be elevated. Clinical features depend on the available space and the level size and the size of the adenoid mass. Neither symptoms, bilateral nasal obstruction mostly, neither the charge due to obstruction of the quena and Associated with chronic rhinitis, sinusitis due to presence of nasal discharge, infection, snoring, hyponasal. Yeah. Or symptoms of sticking tube obstruction leading to retracted tympanic membrane, plus medial diffusion, and conductive uh, hearing loss. Recurrent acute plus media due to spread of infection through a sticking tube, as it will be a reservoir for infection. General symptoms, mouth breathing, nocturnal cough, and uh, just due to uh, post nasal drip, disturbed sleeping, failure to thrive due to uh, inadequate uh, uh, sleeping, and uh, 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 to have a, 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 a proper respiration, and feeding. Um, and pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonary, too long standing, nasal obstruction, and adenoid grading system, zero absent, 25, 50, 75, and more than 75 up to total obstruction. Those are the five grades uh, for adenoid. The diagnosis we use to use the mirror it's difficult to proceed uh, to proceed uh, it's a difficult procedure needs cooperation uh, and also now we can use the lateral neck x-ray nasopharynx 
with neck extension due to nasal inspiration and this might be helpful to evaluate the size of any noise and the interferential airspace and the flexible fiber optic endoscopy it's an easy and dynamic method and very very reliable this is x-ray neurofarynx review showing the enlarged adenoid and very very constricted air column another diagram another diagram and another diagram this is, a, this is like a 50 to 75 percent stenosis and uh, closure of the uh, same here on the left it's almost 70 more than 75 percent obstruction and on the left it's 50 percent obstruction management first and second grade obstruction and will be due to allergic and inflammatory pathology a treatment with uh, decongestion and antihistamine uh, will improve the condition without the need for surgery third and fourth grade of obstruction will need indication for adenoidectomy airway obstruction snoring mouth breathing hyponatality and speech problem sleep apnea uh, or official development and dental abnormalities uh, and pulmonary hypertension due to sleep apnea recurrent infection uh, this is independent of the adenoid size adenoiditis effusion transmitted effusion and a contraindication for adenoidectomy is having uh, acute upper respiratory tract infection uh, that is avoided procedure during this condition. Uh, any uh, coagulation abnormality as this patient will be for bleeding. Cleft palate and submucous cleft palate at the risk of vulvopharyngeal uh, valve insufficiency. This is a cleft, uh, cleft palate, and sometimes there is submucous cleft palate, with, uh, which must be. Uh, palpating a hole at the uh, soft palate. Preoperative evaluation, examination of oral file, rule out any cleft abnormality and size of some mucus cleft palate, such as bifidula and zona pius. And posterior methods, curatage is simple, higher risk of bleeding and uh, higher residual adenoid tissue. Suction cautery is quite good, uh, very good in these days with low blood loss. Uh, must be under direct vision using the uh, uh, sinoscope or endoscope. It's more painful and has very bad over post op Micro debrider by shaving and cutting the adenoid tissue, followed by electrocoagulation. Sometimes might be a tricky procedure, but it's quick. Sometimes uh, we can control the bleeding using the electrocautery, and it's precise tissue removal and beneficial. Sometimes the present of adenoid tissue very very uh, close to the uh, posterior quena, so it's called quenin adenoids. And it must be removed with a micro debrider. It gives a better visualization to this endoscopic approach and the compilation by uh, suction diathermy to the adenoid tissue. Complication bleeding post optically controlled by pressure, by packs, decongested nasal drops, electrocauterization. Uh, if it's persistent, Sometimes there's a pharyngeal insufficiency, um, where there's hypernasality, patients who have palatal abnormality, 
uh, injury to posterior tip of the inferior turbinate causing a massive bleeding injury to the sticking tube orifice and torus tumoris uh, nasal pharyngeal stenosis and scarring might be complication by using excessive diathermy and coagulation recurrence due to regrowth of the nasal tissue if it's much is left behind attempt to the joint subluxation like the Reiser syndrome after this procedure utilization of the uh, 